law professor at the University of Ottawa, where I hold the Canada Research Chair in Internet and E-Commerce Law. And I'm here, I guess because I was invited by the OECD, I just finished moderating uh, one of their panels. Well, in some ways, I, I hope that the track that we've seen to date is one that's going to be allowed to continue. And I think we've seen, especially over the last 10 years, just this explosion of new kinds of creativity and new participation. So whether we're thinking about this from a political perspective with the opportunity for people to give voice and have their voices heard, or the opportunity to create in a new way. So rather than just sort of the consuming approach to culture that we had for so long, now one where people are active participants in that creativity, that has enormous potential. And I guess my hope is that we can continue along a path to ensure that that happens. And there's some concerns that some of the rules that uh, may be coming to the fore around things like net neutrality and overly restrictive copyright laws might stop that from happening. So my hope is that we find a way to ensure that uh, we don't put the brakes on some of this great potential. Well, I guess my fear is this comes directly out of, out of the hopes. Things like a, a non-neutral network where internet service providers and others who are in a position of control choke down much of the potential of the internet fears that overly restrictive copyright laws through any circumvention legislation or insufficient fair use will mean that we're going to criminalize everyday activities and turn people who are simply creating and embracing their culture into people who are alleged to be infringing copyright. And that would be an awful mistake. Well, the one that we've been struggling with for the last decade around internet governance is internet governance. This question of whether or not we can move from an environment where a largely U.S. control over the d domain name system, over the DNS, uh, to one in which all countries have a say and a share. And of course, we have the ICANN model on the one hand, the IGF model on the other. I think we're still struggling to find some sort of middle ground. And while it's understandable that countries that for a long time have had a certain level of control, uh, at the same time, I think it's crucial to recognize that everybody has a stake in this and all of those voices must be heard. Well, I think the conference is a great opportunity to provide many of those different perspectives. We just finished a panel looking at confidence and privacy and security and what was striking was the number of different perspectives, not just internationally, about the prospect of bringing countries together in this kind of fora, but locally as well, where we had, for example, a minister from South Africa talking about concerns around the digital divide, the concerns around access, and talking about it in a village context. Uh, and so not to steal Hillary's line, but it takes a village in this area, and it seems clear that some of these concerns need international solutions, but at the same time, we also have to look to what we're doing at home uh, in ensuring that we've got the right kind of framework. Limitless, I guess.